Angela Thomas is a leading expert in business scaling, especially in the beauty industry, with 30 years of entrepreneurial experience and 11 years as a trainer. She has established herself the number one scaling expert in Germany. Based in Dubai since 2022, she has expanded her focus to include service and retail business. Her career began in the beauty industry, but her expertise now spans multiple sectors, including music, industrial, furniture, real estate, jewelry, wholesale, retail, and airlines. Angela helps entrepreneurs grow their businesses and increase profits. She works closely with her mentees to analyze their situation and identify growth potential. Regular one-to-one -one meetings develop a strong entrepreneurial mindset and optimizing financial processes are central to her approach. Clients benefit from her mentoring through personalized assessments of their businesses situation to identify specific growth opportunities. Regular one-to-one -one meetings address ongoing challenges and strategies. She helps develop a strong entrepreneurial mindset essential for sustainable success. Angela also enhances financial processes to maximize profits and efficiency. First of all, um, selling is nothing bad, forbidden, or dirty kind of thing, yeah. you know, that you're yeah. just like scamming somebody's uh, money out of the purse. Instead, it is actually a very good skill in helping your client to find the right, the, the right decision or the right direction to go. But don't like to sell. It tells me that they actually put their own fear before the need of the client and then how can they care? That's what I'm asking myself. And that's why sometimes I say, this is very selfish to say, I don't like to sell, but I care about my clients so much, but I don't like to sell. Uh, this is just a, a misconception. Learn how to sell without being pushy, but authentic. He said, oh, we are getting, you know, substituted by AI and this will be so bad for humankind and so on. And I think actually that you have only the ability to grow when you understand the matter and the importance of AI, because we are not getting substituted by AI, but we're getting substituted by people who know how to utilize AI. And Again, as usual, before we dive in into this treasure uh, uh, trove of wisdom, here's a little something from the heart. You know, every subscription, every like, every share means the world to me. It's not about numbers. It's about the incredible community we're building together. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and share it with your friends. It's more than just the support. It's a journey we're taking together to spread these great minds and even their greater stories. Monday Talkers, today we have a special guest who's here to help us to unlock the full potential of your business. She's number one scaling expert, a sought after speaker, and a passionate entrepreneur, Angela Thomas, also known as the business brainiac with heart, with a heart. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me here. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. In this episode, we'll dive into the world of business scaling with Angela. She'll be sharing her secrets to maximizing revenue, escaping uh, stagnation and building a thriving business without sacrificing your well-being. We'll discuss uh, also overcoming the fear of sales hiring the right people and achieving sustainable goals. Get ready to be empowered and take your business to the next level. Angela, welcome to the show. All righty, let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the subscription is always important because also the people are helping actually uh, their environment, their friends of getting something very interesting. So that is also a good feeling and a good motivation, I suppose, to subscribe. Let's get <laughs> into this journey together. So let's start with Angela. Who are you? Let's start by getting Ooh. to know a bit better 
You, you've worn many hats throughout your career, entrepreneur, speaker, coach. What drives you and what's at the core of who are you, Angela? In all of the businesses that I have ever started or industries that I worked with or in, it was always about selling. It was mm. always about scaling. So I actually grew up in East Germany and uh, my childhood was uh, was actually uh, in a bakery where I always saw my auntie how she actually you know made uh, the, the even the last piece of cake to be sold the last piece of bread to be sold and I remember myself standing behind that old kind of cashier and these times you have to still you know roll them and I just uh, I, I just remember how I even always looked above this because that was a really forbidden stage to stand and attend mm -hmm. not to go into the sales room but I somehow managed to sneak in anyway and I was looking over uh, this cashier to find out how my auntie did that because every uh, every evening uh, when the when the bakery closed then uh, they made a little celebration and uh, you know when every bread was sold out that uh, that they have achieved their goal so that was sticking to my head and from now on actually through all my uh, through all my growing up uh, things I've always had something to do with selling and uh, that's what uh, also brought me to Dubai basically, because Ooh. everybody asking me, are you not afraid to just leave the country as yes, I'm coming from East Germany or from Germany? Uh, and I said, no, actually, I don't really know what is coming, but I have such an uh, enthusiastic and I can trust at myself and my sales skills. And I say, if you can um, trust your sales skills and if you know how to sell, nothing ever can happen to you so yeah <laughs> beautiful said beautiful said okay talking about sales you know this common thing i love my customers i care about them but i hate selling mm -hmm. so how can you um uh how can they bridge this gap and uh we encourage these their customers to invest in the products or services in a way that feels authentic not selling not pushy and stuff yeah. you know it is actually uh, important that people understand you know on one hand they they say i care about my customers you know and if you just said this sentence i care about my customers but i i, I don't like selling in the same sentence or in the same content i actually get uh, goosebumps because i i feel that you can that on one hand there is a misunderstanding and a misconception because first of all uh, selling is nothing bad forbidden or dirty <laughs> kind of thing yeah. you know that you're yeah. just like scamming somebody's uh, money out of the purse instead it is actually a very good skill in helping your client to find the right the right decision or the right direction to go you you're muted their clients but don't like to sell it tells me that they actually put their own fear before the need of the client and then how can they care? That's what I'm asking myself. And that's why sometimes I say this is very selfish to say, I don't like to sell, but I care about my clients so much, but I don't like to sell. Uh, this is just a, a misconception. Learn how to sell without being pushy, but authentic. And here is what it is actually uh, all about. You have to actually 
try to understand your client. You don't you don't push your client, of course, but lead him. And in in the form or in the moment that you try to understand your client, you understand his or her needs, and then you support them actually with your recommendation because what they want to have is actually a shortcut of what is the better product for them, the better option to book for you or whatever service you have. And, and then based on that, having a time-saving decision made. Mm. So if I'm going in a restaurant and I'm saying, I'm, I'm really hungry, I want to have something to eat and really quick, uh, what can you give me? My favorite food is fish. And and then he comes around and tells me they have on the uh, uh, on special offer a uh, beef wellington from, you know, then I was just like, aha, uh -huh, this might be too much. I just wanted to be healthy and I wanted to have some fish. And, you know, he did not listen to me at all what my needs are. I'm hungry and I want to have some fish and he's not recommending me any of his fish uh, menus. The reason why I'm asking is to have the shortcut because I'm very hungry and I don't want to go through all the menu by myself and to see what, uh, what I'm taking. But I wanted to have a recommendation. If somebody comes to you and they might not ask you for a recommendation you still can ask who's asking is always leading that's my situation and my understanding and if you ask your client you also show interest for your client and it doesn't mean that you first you know start selling on a hardcore you know yeah. but in in terms of uh, trying to understand your client then you get the information on based on that you can authentically give a recommendation and well, mix to that with some yeah. skills onto it about how to ask, how to use the tone of your voice, speed up in speaking, slow down in speaking, have the voice up or down it is something that you can, for example, utilize. But it doesn't have to uh, to uh, it doesn't have anything to do with scamming somebody's money off if you are describing yourself as a salesperson beautifully said now i believe we should go to the basic like how do you look at your business if it's mm. like a, uh, you have these items and you have to sell it out and you're uh, scared to sell it or you feel shy to sell it this is like need to pay a revisit here because if you don't look at it it's a it's a kind of solution or pain healing for your customers you're hungry and you're looking for fish so mm -hmm. if i don't just like offer you the right fish that you're looking for and adding or like a, a solution to that then i have to look uh, again of, uh, of the scale of my selling, right? Or yes. the concept that I'm looking at my own business. If it's not um, uh, a solution, then it's not uh, a dead item on the shelf that I need to just like sell it out, right? So it's, yes. it's a way of thinking of your own business um, rather than just like uh, going to the skills before you go to the skills of selling. You have to look at your business as a um, problem solving or a, a pain healer or a, some service you're doing to your customer or some at least a, a favor or but of course paid one. Agree with you? Yes. Me? Yes, I totally agree. And we have to maybe also rearrange the picture of selling. Selling, uh, if it comes to selling, everybody thinking, you know, most of the times, you know, habits like the wolf of Wall Street, you know, talk, 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 push, 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 push. And then you don't have any other chance but saying yes, other than that, you don't come out of the you know conversation. <laughs> but if you redefine it nowadays uh, into this time century, selling has become totally reinvented. And also the client wants it to be totally different. So if you have a client whom you talk, as I always say in my words, whom you talk with your words on the on the wall, so they cannot back out anything but to say yes. 
you easily have the uh, the idea of them coming back the next day for you know a refund for a complaint unsatisfying mm -hmm. stuff like that you have a high high note of uh, complaints and you know um, not happy clients yes Reviews. yes and and if you are just actually cope to the sales strategy that you should apply nowadays which is actually uh, very authentic and will uh, actually benefit everybody who is like who is saying i don't like to sell then you are just actually make it with the go because in this nowadays says strategies you should buy, uh, uh, build relation 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 yeah. relation means asking and asking what you like how did you do it before uh, why is that what you like and so on and so on no? why do you like fish maybe uh, 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 we don't have uh, such a big uh, uh, fish but we have halloumi with a nice salad to it that is also very light so if you know my motivation why i wanted to have actually a fish dish even not having fish you can find out more what is behind mm -hmm. my desire of having having that fish dish and uh, and then recommend me something else so you started actually to understand your client you understand my needs and then you just swap it around and then you can bring on uh, whatever you like to have uh, for this client and for this customer so nowadays if you build a relationship with your client and i assume everyone who owns a business and has a service to sell would love the clients to be happy yeah. and this is nothing easier than to build up a relationship with this client you just have to be interested a little bit in humans and i suppose um, if you're having a business, you 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 can't do that, you know. It is nothing. Put yourself and, in their in their shoe, right? Exactly, exactly. Go a mile for your for your client, uh, a mile in their shoes, and and then you find it out. And what is then your really superpower is that you are authentic, yeah. and being authentic is actually already the sales done. If you then mm -hmm. only combine it with you know some kind of strategies or techniques you know how to ask as i just mentioned how to uh, use and utilize the power of your voice tonality you know it's yeah. nothing worse if i'm just making mysterious checks which we do sometimes and i have my phone and then i i have i hear somebody hello what can i do for you <laughs> <laughs> this is just so uninvitive that i just actually wanted to hang up again I yeah. did not understand who is on the phone, what they sell, what they have, what service they offer. So and they yeah. <laughs> seem not interested in who is actually also on the other side on the phone. You cannot imagine how many uh, mysterious calls I'm doing for companies with, uh, with uh, answering like that. And this is always very, um, it's actually shattering very much the CEO level that I'm introducing this, how poor uh, the performance is on the phone. But this is also your first intro introduction of, uh, you know, uh, of your company and your first impression and yeah. your first step into how you sell and how cool. much the client keeps down their guard, actually, because nowadays, you know, there's still a lot of people that have only sales strategies out of the 80s on their on their backpack, especially on this on, on this whole real estate agents uh, market in this in, in this industry. Uh, they they calling and they pushing and they have sometimes some awkward strategies. You know, they don't even ask if I want to have a, a, a you know a building a, a villa in in uh, South Dubai. They don't mm -hmm. even ask if I if I have a family. So how how can I imagine they mean it really serious with me? So this is actually from the scratches. So I, I, out of my opinion, nobody has to be scared of sales unless they do something that you should not do anymore. It's push, push, push. And if you start to understand your client, you're automatically in the authentic mood and sales comes not in a push matter, but in a pull matter. So okay. it's easy. Let's let's go beyond sales. Let's let's have okay. this 
holistic approach to 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 yes. success. Okay, mm-hmm. so scaling business isn't just about revenue and selling. What yeah. what other key aspects should entrepreneurs focus on to achieve sustainable success? You know, it's so funny when people coming to me and want to have my guidance in scaling up their business, they often think they only can uh, get sales trainings with me. And that is the non plus ultra what they can do. And with everything like that, it's solved, you know, Mm -hmm. but then I just need to actually put them a cold water over their head, uh, giving them the cold shower of truth, because it is not if you have a very skilled person who knows how to sell let's say they went to my training or in any other training you know and they know how to sell but then they don't have the infrastructure in their business in the company that i work on on, Mm -hmm. they can really poorly scale their business so if you have um, let's uh, stick with this example of a real estate agent if you have uh, a google sheet with uh, all kind of addresses in you know and you call them randomly you can't really barely make any kind of notes anymore because you're calling them already for so long and all the tables are already full with all the notes that you've already met and you are actually need to take a day vacation until you uh, read all of this you 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 don't have a system, you know, but if you, for example, have a, ZM, a CRM system where mm-hmm. you can structure uh, your sales, talks, clients, needs, mm-hmm. yeah, you build, yeah. I mean, you put down the client's needs, the client's behavior, then uh, it is something so important. Uh, I mean, some of these days, I, I can show you something. I have here a flower, you know, yeah. I wanted to have a Chinese money flower. So. I had a recommendation from an online shop. Just, uh, I just saw this picture from a big old flower. Uh, it was a big, good money tree. And I thought like, okay, this is mine. Let's buy it. It was 130 dirham. And uh, it was supposed to be delivered on the next day. So I ordered it on Sunday. It was not there on Wednesday. And I was wondering what is happening. So I looked for the WhatsApp chat, actually, and tried to call them or uh, uh, write them. You know, everything is going over uh, WhatsApp here in Dubai. So I, I saw that they read and saw my messages, but did not reply. I was really had to get very angry after the fifth message. I said, you really guys have to book a course with me because you are not responding. I see you are having my complaints here going on, but you are not responding. So to make a long story short, the same day I had my flower, it was not as big as I had. I just showed you here it's a really one so it's my actually it's my purpose to grow this money tree (laughs) (laughs) i suppose but coming to the point now i asked them actually how do i water this how do i treat this and uh, there was no answering only after two days okay i got the answer later i asked him please inform me if you then get in such a big flower that I saw on the picture of your online shop. And I bet you that they will not have put it in any CRM that if the next delivery, because it's out of season of these certain flowers, that's the reason why they have not responded and so on and so on. But if it comes to the season of this very much Chinese flower, uh, you know, uh, money flower, I bet you they don't know me as a client anymore because yeah. I'm lost in some kind of WhatsApp chat. How beautiful would that be if they had my birthday, if they had the desire of what I want, and if I was the first one who was actually uh, making my order for a big money tree. And that only can happen if you build up a really good structure, infrastructure inside your system, inside your business, you know? and. This is actually losing opportunities. This is lost opportunities. And okay, you let's can talk about, do this with let's talk yeah, about, you can yeah. do this in any kind of industry, you know, with any kind of product. So yeah. L- l- now let's get specific. Entrepreneurship okay. in Dubai. What's what's the Ooh. difference? Oh huge the, difference. <laughs> what, what's the entrepreneurial <laughs> landscape like 
in Dubai, yes. are they are they uh, e- any unique? They have you unique challenges or unique opportunities for business owners there? Yes, an entrepreneur friend actually who guided me to be in Dubai. I came now here almost uh, two years ago for being stationary. I've been in and out of Dubai since 2016 as a trainer, but then you are taking it as, you know, you only visit, you only there for a time, you have it on a, a sort of a lighter shoulder. But being here then for good, after the first week, I got this uh, message from a good friend of mine. He said, Angela, being in Dubai, you certainly have to be a little bit less chairman. And that's the big challenge that I have actually in Dubai. And I find it actually very challenging if some people are not on time. And it happened to me too, because you cannot really cruise through this town and really predict everything uh, that will happen to you. So you underestimate or overestimate the skills of the taxi driver, or there is a you know, traffic jam and you have to calculate this all in. So being on time for my entrepreneurship is, is such an essential thing, you know, being in and out of strategy um, uh, uh, meetings. I have a lot of business uh, to do with my clients online. And uh, sometimes I see myself with my laptop on the backseat of a taxi. Good luck that I'm not driving myself. So I could <laughs> even do the meeting. <laughs> and, uh, and and that is actually the big challenge to be on time. And I also realized this with my, with my clients who have a POS, a point of sale, a clinic, a saloon, a spa, a real estate agent or whatsoever. Um, and then I see them falling out of revenue because clients are not coming short, uh, short cancellation. And in Germany, we do not have this. We have cancellation fees. If you not, if you don't cancel in time, you still have to pay. You know, I see this sometimes here in Dubai too, but for a little uh, enterprise, it's literally not uh, possible to do. It's only for the big, uh, the big chains and uh, that is the biggest challenge actually i find that mm. people uh, have a different understanding of the value of time yeah Beautiful. okay let's jump on another level um oh, entrepreneur oh. going bigger okay mm-hmm. so at some time at some point i have to grow a team yes when is the right time for a business owner to start hiring employees? The right time of scaling up your business over uh, over uh, workforce, I mean, recruitment employees, is actually from the 1st of January to the 31st of uh, December. So okay. it means the whole year you can scale. <laughs> it, is, <laughs> it is just important that uh, your environment inside, your structure, your, you know, as I said, your infrastructure inside is set it. Until then, you should actually work on that. If you have achieved your infrastructure inside, you have actually put it to your processes of work. So you can put some somebody on who maybe uh, works after exactly that uh, process and uh, or even develops a new process for uh, another task. But until then, you did not uh, you did not develop your own infrastructure inside. You you then only waste your time and also your money because you are leading it to somebody else. They might they might waste your time and your money as well because they say, oh, I don't know how it's working. I don't know how it's working. So if you have set it up processes like, for mm. example, they know how to work and they know how the workflow is of, you know, onboarding a new client. You have to do this, this and this step by step. You have made this clear. You can train somebody, you can introduce somebody and then also your uh, people that you employ are actually getting really quick on a certain level. I really hate when my clients are coming to me and I say, she is working just the first months here. Uh, She's allowed to do mistakes. In my world, actually, you have to be after the third day on top of the game. 
And it only speaks for you as a leader. If your employee it has to take a whole month to actually find themselves around your business. It is a leadership, uh, a, a leadership issue and a leadership quality. It, 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 you should, out of the matter of your business and money resources, you should actually utilize your employees from the first day. So, of course, they have to find an office away, uh, uh, you know, the password, the, you know, way to the bathroom, who is responsible for whom. This is, okay, orientation. If you're a smart leader, you give them already an onigagram and tell them who is responsible for what prior to their start so they can prepare themselves. But in my world, an employee has to start and be efficient right away. There is no such a gap like with, you know, a, a big kind of, um, as we say, puppy face, you know, mm. and uh, and uh, also it is a very beautiful way of scaling with client, uh, with uh, with uh, candidates, with employees. But on the other hand, um, you have to look out today that it, it, it is also possible to detach their time of uh, 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 away from the money you know uh, the the fact of time away from the money so let's say um, I as a business owner want to also scale up what I have to do I have to detach my workforce from mm -hmm. factor time and so if you can actually utilize your workies, I mean, your employees that work for you also from the fact of what they are uh, to do, their workforce for, you know, uh, being attached to the fact of time, then it's so beautiful to scale. So let's uh, make an example. Me as an entrepreneur, I wanted to sell, sell, sell. So that's why I have, for example, uh, online platform, this called the e-academy, in which I have over 3000 videos with all my trainings and some of these uh, things that I'm uh, I'm sharing. And, uh, and this enables me to actually detach my knowledge from factor time. So multiple people can actually learn with my platform, with the knowledge of, of mine, without me being personally there. Now, doing this the same thing with my employees, it's even more leveraged, you know. So having an employee who can utilize, for example, AI very much. So it's not needed for uh, for a business that I have one copywriter, one media buyer, one web designer, one content yeah. creator. Maybe I can have, with the help of AI, uh, one person who can utilize AI so much that these tasks of four people are included in one. And that is scaling up your business. Mm -hmm. And my quote on this is a lot of people, I was talking recently about this in uh, a event, uh, Tech for Women, it was uh, just last week, and uh, in which I introduced how to utilize actually AI in, in business. and. In, in, in this one, it was my quote that uh, we are not, because a lot of people ha were scared, actually. They said, oh, we are uh, getting, you know, substituted by AI and this will be so bad for humankind and so on. And I think actually that you have only the ability to grow when you understand the matter and the importance of AI, because we are not getting substituted by AI but we're getting substituted by people who know how to utilize AI. And that is so important to understand nowadays uh, when it comes to the matter of scaling. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Substituting by people who know how to utilize AI. Yes. Very clever. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we're running out of time so very, very quickly. So uh, on the wrap up, uh, what's your golden nugget advice to summarize all this or put two lines to address to the audience and give them something to help them today? Well, you always should uh, see your business out of metaverse if 
you have a horse carriage actually this is something a beautiful picture that i always draw in the mind of my clients uh, a horse carriage this is your scaling business so at uh, the first stage you are getting actually your horse carriage and ride yourself on the horse then the second step you scale uh, you take a second horse then the third the fourth the fifth horse and so on and one day you cannot ride all of these horses then you sit actually uh, on top of it but actually this is uh, too too difficult to do all of this by yourself because you want to actually develop your business uh, on a bigger scale and that's why you have to as an entrepreneur really think yourself in the carriage of the horse ca uh, carriage you know uh, you employ somebody who's leading all of these horses and now here comes something in the carriage you're sitting as an entrepreneur you have actually the vision of three years in a hat Mm -hmm. The guy or the person who is sitting to lead all your horses has maybe a half year of knowledge of where it is supposed to go. And the horses that are actually running only have to have the vision and the information of what they should know two, two months in advance. Mm -hmm. And having that is actually bringing your organization on a very good operational point because everybody is not in the business of somebody else and everybody knows their higher purpose. So you know the purpose, but you don't need to share what is in your mind, what happened in three years, because your goals would scare the person up on the horse carriage. This person knowing only a half year ahead of where this enterprise should go and uh, only tells the people down the horses where we are gonna head within the next two, uh, two months because they would be scared of going that way and would ask and question of this is sensible what we're doing here in the next half year. And in order to prevent that, it's very, very important for you as an entrepreneur to know with whom you're working and what information they have. They do not have to always understand your full idea. And a lot of business owners underestimate what you can achieve in three years and mm. overestimate what you achieve in one year beautiful example <laughs> i love it <laughs> so okay for anyone who wants to dive deeper into this uh angela how can they find you website social media what's what's the point where yes is the point? well you can actually find me very much on linkedin you just uh, can subscribe to the newsletter. It's a sales navigator newsletter. I have every Wednesday a live stream. It's the skill on air, skill on air. Uh, it's a, a format that's just very young. And uh, yeah, I give then a kind of uh, advices on how you scale your business. And uh, yeah. Uh, we have little, uh, little portions there and uh, YouTube also, you can uh, put in the business revolution or uh, I have several channels uh, for different uh, for different industry and the beauty industry that I used to work very long. Um, I'm well known as trainer for beauty, but go on Instagram and uh, look on Angel Success Consulting or give that just simply in uh, LinkedIn or Google and you will find me. Amazing. Well, we will make sure to provide all these links in the description <laughs> below. Now Bye. it's time for closing. So it's a huge thank you, Angela Thomas, for joining us on Monday Talks. This conversation has been packed with valuable takeaways. Thank you very much, really. And I thank know you. our audience is feeling empowered to scale their business with heart because they, this is the dream of their life. So until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and remember, change is good and it's happening anyway. It's your call how to embrace, reject, fight, or smartly adapt. To all our viewers, remember to follow, like, and subscribe to Monday Talks for more insightful conversation like this one. Until next time, stay empowered and take care. And keep the smile. Bye for now. Thank you, Angela. Thank you.